So a lot of these results, including that young man from Egembe South, uh, have been declared uh, back at the constituency level. So we can talk about this this month, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. What does this, uh, Javas, what, what does it say? I mean, we have, we have several of such uh, stories. We have some a former journalist uh, making it, uh, being elected uh, members of parliament, governor, Grant on Samboja's case. Um, what, what does this say about this country, the democracy? You, you see, this country, and this election especially, has had its fine surprises. And when the voters made their statement, for example, in April during the party primaries, some chose not to listen and elected to be independent candidates. And the voters, except in rare situations where uh, you, know, you lost and uh, you were disgruntled, but the tribunals did not uh, justifiably handle your matter in a free and fair manner, uh, we've seen the upside years of independent candidates. And uh, much more than that, those individuals who insisted to run as independents, the citizens went to the ballot to confirm that they didn't want them yet again. Many so it, it has had that kind of uh, effect. But much more than that, we also realize that many youngsters have ventured into uh, elective politics and also many media people. And there are lots of success stories. This tells you that it's not maybe the old politics of money everywhere in the country that wins somebody a political office. There are situations where people want fresh blood, young blood coming into office, and that's been witnessed, say, in the case uh, that we've just uh, seen a, a few minutes ago. And moving forward, one expects even that maybe in the year 2022, we're going to see many younger people taking to elective politics. And that tells you that our democracy is coming of age. So our politicians also should come of age with our democracy so that together in this century, we celebrate our democracy All right. perfectly. Hasbun? I think it's, 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 it's a bright uh, spark in our election, you know, to have uh, a young man, because uh, uh, looking at, at him, you know, second year at university level, I don't think he's driven by anything other than service. Uh, and then there is this uh, perception that most uh, politicians get into politics either to protect their ill-gotten wealth or just to wallow in, 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 in a lot of uh, power and influence in retirement. And this is a step in the right direction that a lot of people, a lot of young uh, men and women in Kenya will grow up knowing that politics is a serious, you know, professional pathway that they can take. And uh, if they do the right thing, interact with the people, address issues, they will get elected. And uh, I, I want to believe that um, this is not the first time you're seeing this in, in, in Meru County. In the last election, we had Getobu came to parliament. He got a, a little bit of ambitious and decided to go for the gubernatorial seat and lost it. In 1998, when uh, I think some of us were very young, uh, there is a young man in Sierra Leone, you know, who from a very junior army officer became the president at around 26, called Valentino Stroza. You know, that guy is now wallowing in poverty. So it's, it's not a question of this guy has arrived. And I want to believe that he will walk with his feet on the ground and serve the people and not his head in the cloud. But looking at it uh, widely, it, it, it's a big thing in our democracy, not just in Meru and not just this young man. I think we've had uh, encouraging uh, results from uh, many parts of this country. We've had uh, an independent uh, uh, gubernatorial candidate winning in Laikipia, which is uh, a brilliant sign that the electorate right now is not looking at parties or politics of belonging, but they're looking at individuals who can serve. In my native Migori, I think in Suna West, it has now been confirmed that uh, uh, Peter Masara is the MP elect. He has beaten an ODM candidate as an independent candidate, which of course tells you that uh, we, we, we are moving uh, beyond the politics of, you know, the big tribal kingpins, the established political parties to politics that is issue based, which is a bright space to be moving towards. All right, yes, Moss? Well, well, for me, I, I was hoping that this was going to be the norm rather than the exception, so that people are elected to the National Assembly, not because they are members of a particular party or because of their fat balances, but right. because of their superior understanding of issues and their capacity to deliver. The last parliament got an A in uh, mediocrity, impunity, and corruption. Because majority of the people who went to the National Assembly and the Senate, they did not go there because they have a, a desire to serve. For them, going to the National Assembly or Senate is merely a factor of production. As soon as you get there, your first uh, duty of business is to start looking for tenders and you start cutting deals all over so that you even forget that you're supposed to be making contributions. We keep on uh, discussing the issue of uh, food security. One wonders how Kenya can be food insecure 
yet you have a CS responsible for agriculture. But more important, you have two committees in the National Assembly and in the Senate responsible for food security. Meaning that the people who are there, they just go for those uh, committees. They go in for two minutes, technical appearance, they collect their sitting allowance, they take a walk. When they go to the full plenary, they just want to be noticed by the Speaker. Mm -hmm. Which is why, as we speak today, probably the Speaker of the National Assembly does it know more than 20% of his members on a, a first name basis. You even recall he used to refer them by the, you know, the anatomy, that, that man with the bald, because they didn't even make any contribution. But one hopes that when this young man gets to the National Assembly, he does not get overwhelmed by the kind of power that he's going to see. Because you see, he's been accused of, uh, rather, one of his highly possessed item is uh, a pullover. pullover. Now he'll find himself putting on uh, those expensive uh, Bryony suits like yours for 100,000. <laughs> and then he'll forget that he's supposed to be serving those people. There's a good case in mind. You remember the youngest MP I recall was Wayenya Indirango. He got into the National Assembly when he was 22, when he was in some institutes of technology. But he did not know how to manage his affairs, and he got himself into trouble. But I think he repackaged himself and he went back to the National Assembly. But, but the big lesson here is that uh, if you're a political party and you do not conduct your, manner, your, 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 your affairs in a manner which respects democracy, mm -hmm. then people are going to run away. They'll have an opportunity to serve. And congratulations to Neritu Muraidi. When uh, he lost in the party primaries for Jubilee because of uh, mischief perpetuated, I said to myself, those voters have got no idea of the kind of uh, yeah. skill and talent they've lost. And um, I, I would easily say that uh, like Kipe in the next five years is probably going to be a model county in Kenya because uh, that gentleman has got a superior understanding of economics. Mm -hmm. He runs a very successful uh, beef organization. And if he transfers just 10% of what he knows to the county, the county will make a, a lot of progress. All right. As we wind up, uh, let me ask you this question. Very loaded question, I must agree. Um, <laughs> this uh, result that we've seen, especially the parliamentary, uh, from those counties where we've seen, uh, you know, Jubilee get a lot of seats, seemingly. Of course, provisional results, most of them, but uh, a lot of them have been uh, confirmed back there at the constituencies. Um, even as we, as Kenyans, wait for the official tally from the IABC on the presidential vote, uh, do you think it gives, uh, you know, credibility that Jubilee has won a lot of other seats? So this other tally that Kenyans are questioning and NASA are questioning and Kenyans are waiting uh, for IBC to do it justice could be the truth of the matter. I mean, comparing to 2007, uh, the bungled presidential election where uh, retired President uh, Mwai Kibaki won the presidency or was declared a winner, but he did not have the numbers in parliament. Javas, let's start. Uh, it tells you that in a way Jubilee worked harder to try and spread its wings mm -hmm. across the country. For instance, look at the number of counties that they have won. Number 26 number of counties, you know, that's not small. And much more than that, you realize that uh, in some very unlikely quarters, it's been projected that we may have certain individuals who are inclined or are party members of Jubilee taking up uh, those opportunities. Uh, also, I think it speaks to that maturation of our democracy. Because if some parties would perceive that certain areas are their strongholds, yet your opponent comes in, raids your area, and gets to have their candidates win, then Kenyans are rising to demonstrate that they are tolerant to even ideals of other parties, much as we still have a long way to go. Because when you go to other areas, then the narrative is different. So those cases are isolated. But I think it's something that we need to learn from and appreciate that it's the kind of democracy, the kind of politics that would make our country better, where we are separated by ideology and political philosophy in such engagements, but not because of ethnic inclination and such related affiliations. All right. Asma? Well, uh, I think your question is relatively interesting because, uh, you know, there's some credence that you get as a presidential candidate when so many candidates in your political party also win, because the assumption then is you had grassroots support that cascaded all the way upwards. Uh, uh, but uh, there are two things here. Now, one is the fact that in 2007, this whole uh, narrative was debunked. You know, when uh, Raila Odinga had the numbers in parliament, uh, yet Kibaki 
one at the top, you know, and of course we know the stories around that. So, I mean, not many people will take that as, as, as something really, really serious in terms of cementing uh, whatever happens at the presidential level at this time. Uh, then secondly, you also realize that Jubilee as a political party uh, actually folded all the other small political parties that formed the Jubilee Alliance to come up with JP, which, which tells you that uh, to a large extent, some of these guys who have won on Jubilee were naturally already strong in other political parties that folded. And then thirdly, you realize that Jubilee also had a strategy you know, outright to win certain uh, parliamentary, gubernatorial, and senatorial positions. And uh, you, you also have this feeling that in certain instances, they went for candidates who were already strong. You know, you look at Kuala, for instance, Salim Vuria. I mean, I think he was already well entrenched on the ground, and for him, it didn't matter where he went. Now, he went to Jubilee, and with the resources, again, it was a uh, no-brainer for him to, to use the strategies in Jubilee and the resources to win. Uh, but you also need, uh, lastly, for instance, uh, for, for, for the sake of looking at the presidential race now that we, we still don't have a conclusive uh, picture, uh, you, you also need to be alive to the fact that Raila is an enigma, you know. And there is a way in which in his campaign, uh, the main focus was on the presidency. Actually, in certain instances, the narrative was, forget about Siasa ya Ukuchini. <laughs> we will do what we want to do down here. Up there, we are with you. So there is that belief that, uh, you know, uh, as, as a presidential candidate, he didn't go out saying, say hi to so-and-so, say hi to so-and-so in terms of endorsing people. And therefore, it opened up space for, 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 for one, most of guys who are aligned to him to compete against themselves and pave the way for Jubilee. So you cannot uh, really bank on the fact that Jubilee has so many candidates and therefore think of the way the presidential vote would go because oh, of right. the enigmatic nature of Raila Odinga. Yes, ma'am. The, the best form of administration a country can never have is have uh, different political parties running different institutions. Like, for instance, if you have a Jubilee at a state house, Ideally, you should be having uh, NASA controlling the two houses or uh, the converse. So that uh, if you are president, say, and you are from NASA, you must go and have conversations with the party leaders of the, the other parties which control the Senate and National Assembly so that nobody is given to making unilateral decisions. What we've had in the last administration is that President Kenyatta made unilateral decisions. Whether they were right or wrong, all he needed to do was to call Mturi and Equeturo and uh, tell them to deal. And it's almost a similar situation that uh, Trump is having uh, in the States today because uh, the Republicans control essentially everything. But it would be such a nice idea that they are from different parties. So before the president takes a decision, he has to go and consult. Now for the probability that Jubilee is going to have a majority in the National Assembly and uh, the Senate, it's not because they had a clever strategy. Far from it. They're beneficiaries of uh, mischief within NASA. Like, for instance, the gentleman who was won in uh, Langata, he's beaten his opponent, that's uh, uh, Nixon Korir, he's beaten his opponent by hardly a thousand votes. Right. This gentleman who was beaten is uh, from ODM. If NASA were wise enough to combine ODM, WIPA, Ford, Kenya, it would have been very easy for them to beat, uh, to beat right. Jubilee. But again, it's because uh, they, we have a very selfish political leaders. Because every politician wants to command his uh, ethnic bloc. He does not want to relinquish it to another organization. Because there are so many people within uh, Jubilee right now who are beginning to feel that they're being constrained. Because they no longer exercise that absolute power that they have. But maybe one hopes that uh, as we make progress, parties are going to be anchored on uh, ideologies instead of being anchored on uh, tribal figures, as it is the case today. All right. Do, do you think, final question, do you think that is what uh, Jubilee have achieved? I mean, again, if these figures remain <laughs> as they are on those other elective positions, because they say we want to unite this country, we want to change politics, um, do you think that is what they have achieved with this one political party, or is it a bad thing? You see, uh, it, 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 it worked for them to collapse all their parties into one and see how they can flex their muscle, facing off with uh, their opponents. And you see, uh, their opponents uh, under the NAS umbrella having all and fielding all candidates everywhere, it has cost them. It has really cost them. Some other areas, they would have really won those seats. All right. But, uh, you know, you've got to give it to, to Jubilee, really. Because if, already, yes. All right. If, uh, if this tally remains as is, this provisional tally that we have, that has been scrolling there and has been scrolling on that portal by the IBC, remains as is and ends up being the final tally. 
um, I'm being the devil's advocate. Um, what happens to these NASA principles? <laughs> well, uh, you see, they'll be in trouble if uh, President Kenyatta is uh, ultimately declared as the winner in this election. You realize then that Kalonzo Musioka will, uh, you know, be in the cold now for another five years. And even though there's this silent, this memorandum, this agreement uh, within the NASA principles that he be supported for 2022, we're going to have new, fresh, and interesting battle for formations, say from 2018, with people starting to make arithmetics on how to bring together whole blocks and uh, groups that can help to win the election, mm -hmm. you know, in those groupings. But now, look, Mudavadi. Mudavadi, you see, even in this election, yeah, he's, uh, him and uh, Honorable Etangula, they have been the kingpins of the Western region. But truth be told, he has not brought the entire Western region, 99%, to NASA. And we, we, we have even seen uh, Jubilee doing well, you know, or winning some seats in, in, in the Western region. So that tells you that Honorable Mudavadi as well, mm -hmm. if at all he wants to rise in 2022 and run for political office, whether under that same old outfit or a newer one that he will want to join, he may need to fold his sleeves and work even harder. All right. And, you know, reposition himself. Uh, Hesbon, what do you think? And of course, maybe you can mention Isaac Ruto as well in that. Uh, no, I, I think my take is, uh, you know, the, the way our system of uh, com elective competition is structured, it's a winner take it all. And it's tragedy for the loser. And, uh, and that informs why our presidential elections are hotly contested. Because if you don't win, there's no fallback. You're not going to be an MP, you're not going to be a senator. You're just out in the cold. Uh, and, and, and kudos to, to Raila and Kalonzo for remaining relevant for the last four and a half years. Uh, and, and I don't think they would want to go through that again. And uh, if in the event that whatever you're saying happens, I think this will be the end of... of, of I mean, they wouldn't want to put themselves in, in, in a situation where now... Uh, they are keeping, you know, the same, same government on toes. I think it will bring the curtains, uh, you know, the curtains will fall on, on, on their careers. That is my belief, and it is the honorable thing for them to do. But I'm not seeing that happening. Uh, I'm not preempting anything yet. I want to believe that we will see a totally different thing. And uh, knowing the president of this republic, President Uru Kenyatta, I also understand that he will be magnanimous enough and humble enough uh, you know, to find a way of accommodating, because careers are coming to an end here. So, you, you, you're, as a good president, uh, you may want to, you know, give uh, anyone, you know. And I'm not saying this about, uh, you know, Raila and Kalonzo, because in the event that this provisional results don't remain like this, uh, I think even them, it will be a tall order, you know, because for one, we know that that would be the end of President Uru Kenyatta. Uh, he has reached the, the, the pinnacle of a political career being the president, so it right. will come uh, to, to, to an end. This, but uh -huh. if I may continue, I mean, the other guys who are thinking of 2022 and looking at the election as it's panning out, uh, I think uh, we are moving into a direction where there is a new consciousness that is emerging. Mm -hmm. Uh, a crop of politicians are coming on board, and I think the 2022 political dispensation is going to be a lot more refreshing in terms of being a lot more issue-oriented, right. and it will bring on board different young minds that currently are on different political divides. All right, this must very quickly. What is your crystal ball telling you? You, you know, a crystal ball is not very clear right now, but uh, there, there are two possibilities. President Kenyatta is going to retain his office, or Raila Odinga is going to become uh, the new president. That one, you don't need to know anything to make that prediction. But if President Kenyatta retains this position, then uh, it's a sad day for most of the NASA principals. Number one, Kalonzo Musioka will become a good chapter in history books. He'll have no breathing space with uh, Charity Ngilu, Kivuda Kibwana, and Dr. Alfred Mutua. He will need a good retirement uh, package at his uh, Yata home and maybe do his memoirs. The same thing will happen to Raila Odinga. He'll also become a chapter in history books, he'll become an enigma, and he's going to write books. The only person who is going to rise will be Musalia Mdavadi. Musalia Mdavadi decided to review his uh, political ambitions to support uh, Raila Odinga for a strategic reason, to inherit his uh, right. political capital. Mm -hmm. So most likely he's going to do that. But uh, Utangula still is going to be playing around because you see his it's biggest uh, achievement this time around is to kick out uh, Governor Lusaka. So he may need to cut a deal with um, Salem Davadi. But the biggest liberty for Kenya would be that in uh, 2022, 
you do not need to have a, a strong sun for you to run for anything. Because this one will bring, you, you recall, you must have read that book called uh, Romeo and Juliet, the fight between the Montagues and the Capulets. If uh, whoever is declared a president, uh, or rather re-elected or elected, that's a family feud between uh, the Montagues and the Capulets in the modern Kenya society will come to an abrupt end. So 2022, anybody with uh, presidential ambitions, you don't need to ask yourself whether your father was around in independence for you to rise to any position. So I can try. I mean, give it a try. <laughs> some, of, some journalists are making it. All right, thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, political commentators here. Uh, with us here on uh, Kivumbi 2017, Dismas Mokua, Hezbollah Wila, and Javas Bigambo. Thank you so much for joining us. That's where we leave it at, uh, for on tonight's edition of Kivumbi 2017. But of course, we remain uh, keeping vigil for you to, uh, to find out what will be happening. Of course, Yusuf Ibrahim is keeping an eye on things at the National Tallying Centre, the Bombers of Kenya, to just uh, uh, see what's happening there as the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission uh, waits uh, to give more results to Kenyans. They say uh, they have a at around 170 or a result from 170 out of the 290 constituencies to give they will be having a press briefing or an update at 5 a.m that is in about um five hours time from now and we shall be giving you that so we'll continue uh giving you the numbers the details of course giving you the updates from both sides uh from what's happening from the ibc side and of course from the national super alliances side and of course keeping an eye on reactions as well from the Jubilee side, even as Kenyans continue to wait uh, to know who their next set of leaders will be, especially their next president. I'm Ben Kitili. Thanks for watching. Good night.